Hi everybody, very excited about this uh, setup in this video today. I got this little ham hammock rigged up on a mini high line between that red pine over there and this white pine to my side, to my back. Beautiful view of uh, Lake Superior behind me. But uh, today I'm going to be starting a short little series, uh, kind of trying to share what I know about ropes because uh, there are a lot of really fantastic videos out there about how to choose a certain climbing rope. But um, there are some more in-depth ones, but they're not, uh, I feel like I have some different information that I would like to focus on and share. So that's the reason I'm making these videos. And since uh, I come from kind of like a, I'm definitely a rope enthusiast and really enjoy uh, splicing ropes. And so I view ropes a little bit differently than you might if you were just any, just uh, love more into the climbing and gear aspect, not so much the ropes. But because of that, I'm gonna categorize the ropes into three different categories. It's going to be uh, based entirely on their construction and specifically in their construction, which component of the rope is the load bearing component. That's really important when you're splicing the rope because understanding where the strength of the rope comes from, you have to know how to uh, use that part of the rope to create a strong splice. So. I don't have any special special qualifications that uh, make me an expert on rope at all. I'm just a very uh, enthusiastic person who loves rope. Rope is my absolute favorite piece of tri tree climbing gear. I've tried many different ropes and there's a lot of ropes I uh, enjoy and some that I'm not so enthusiastic about. But uh, today in this first video here, we are gonna be talking about the most elementary types of ropes, which are the cover dependent ropes. <laughs> I got some awkward positioning here because I can't find a place to put the camera where it's not shaking like crazy. So I think this is kind of my best bet, but Hopefully the other videos will be easier than this. But it's so cool being out here. But anyways, uh, cover dependent ropes are kind of the most basic ropes. We got kind of three here uh, today. Some of them, some of these construction styles are the most elementary types of ropes. Uh, kind of the first ropes that were ever really made even. Uh, starting with just like a three strand style rope. I don't have the Samson version of this, which is the real tree climbing rope. This is just some polypropylene rope from the hardware store, but this isn't even really a braided construction. It's just three, uh, three different strands, bundles of strands that were wound in opposite directions and then coiled in the other direction. And three strand rope you will rarely see as a rigging rope anymore. It hasn't been used as a climbing rope for a long time. You might still find some uh, buck straps for sale that are made using a three strand climbing rope. Kind of the reason for that is because this is super easy to splice. You don't need really any specialized tools to splice this rope. Uh, you can just splice it with, uh, I, use, I usually just use some painter's tape and then uh, maybe a, you could use like a screwdriver if you needed some way to separate the strands. But splicing this goes really easily. This. Uh, came in all kinds of constructions. You had people using uh, natural fiber ropes until we had like nylon and then polyester, polypropylene, things like that. But this hasn't been featured in the climbing industry uh, for quite some time now and you will rarely see people even rigging with it. Uh, but the more classic rope, which is actually what we have this, what I have this high line rigged with, is uh, 12 strand ropes like this uh, Samson True Blue, which is pretty uh, well known, a very, very popular rope when it was uh, kind of the more technically advanced thing out there. So this is a uh, 12 strand braided polyester, uh, which is, it's a hollow braid rope. So uh, the strands are braided together, but there is no core to this rope. The only thing in the core of this rope is a tracer, uh, just with some manufacturing information on there. But uh, these ropes, you'll still see them around. Uh, they make uh, great rigging lines. They're very durable. Uh, they're very soft, unlike uh, 16 strand ropes, which we'll talk about next. Since they don't have a core, they're very easy to manipulate in the hand, very easy to tie knots. 
uh, but they do kind of flatten out. Uh, they don't really stay round uh, since they don't have a core to stabilize them. But uh, yeah, you'll, you'll still see some people using this as a climbing rope, but uh, it pretty much only appears as a rigging rope really anymore. This uh, line is not, uh, does not have a commercial splice available. I'm sure if you were clever enough, you could definitely find a way to safely splice this rope. However, uh, I have not really delved into that or found anyone that has tried such a thing, but it is hollow, so you know there might be some way to do it if you uh, taper it properly. But uh, as of right now, no, uh, nobody's really trying to splice these. You'll, you'll find them in sewn configurations, but that's about it. But then moving on, we have a 16 strand rope, which you will still find uh, quite commonly. Now, this is an excellent rope for beginners. Uh, plenty of people use this as a climbing line still, even though it tends to appear more as a light duty rigging line. But uh, these are pretty much always bigger ropes, uh, almost exclusively up until now featured in the uh, half inch uh, size diameter. Uh, they'll pretty much all be a polyester cover with uh, either a polyester or a nylon core. Now, it, although it does have a core, this is still a cover-dependent rope. All of the strength is designed to co come from the cover, just like a 12-strand rope. The purpose of the core is just to stabilize the rope and to keep it in a round shape. Now, these ropes are really good for beginners because one, they're that larger diameter, very easy to hold on to, and they are a coarser braid than, uh, say, 24-strand or 32-strand uh, covers. So much easier to hold on to, and they are very easy to inspect. It doesn't take much to inspect these since it is a cover-dependent rope. Anything you see wrong with the cover is an indication that the strength of the rope has been compromised and uh, is possibly no longer suitable for use. So it's very easy to inspect, and uh, that's one of the things that makes it a great uh, beginner rope. It is also very easy to splice. It can be tough if you're doing a used rope, but technically very easy to do. You don't need, uh, the only special item you need to splice this rope is just uh, a wire fid, which you can pick up pretty cheaply or even make your own from uh, piano wire. There are other tools that are nice to have, but basically the way I see it, the way I've spliced these in the past, the most important thing to have is just that wire fid. So uh, if you're a beginner and you think that you might be interested in splicing ropes, this is a pretty uh, fantastic type of uh, rope to pick up. It uh, is great for double rope because uh, you can get a nice splice in there and it tolerates being uh, natural crotch very well. So if you're using this for removals and you're not into using uh, friction savers or anything, this rope will wear like iron. Uh, rigging, they do get worn out pretty fuzzy in a couple years, but uh, climbing, they do not see that same type of abrasion. So it will start to get fuzzy, but uh, probably won't necessarily need to be retired for sometime as long as you can keep yourself from cutting it if you are a beginner but it almost has been exclusively featured in the half inch 12 to 13 millimeter configurations but uh just recently uh the first one was uh uh Courant really hit the market with their uh Camora, which was a 11.7 millimeter uh uh, 16 strand rope which was nicer to get something lighter out there because one of the one of the downsides of these ropes is that they can uh, get to be quite heavy they, these are quite large ropes uh, but you know if you're a beginner you're probably not going to be climbing that high and the weight of this rope will not deter you as much as it will someone who is needing to have say a 200 foot line or 300 foot line even but if you are looking for a lighter option, there is the, uh, now this is the Samson Wildcat. This is even smaller than the Kimura at 11.5 millimeters, more in that 7 16 range. Uh, so this is a fantastic uh, smaller rope if you're looking to reduce some weight, but uh, still keeping that 16 strand construction. Again, very easy to inspect and wears very well. So. This uh, rope will just give you a quick overview of how to splice this rope because they are very simple and it is very easy to do. So just a quick overview, we're going to start by marking out our rope. Then since this is a cover dependent rope, we're going to remove the core and only use it in the taper. Then the next thing to do is going to be to taper the cover for reinsertion. 
and then using a wire fid we're going to pull the cover back into itself and I like to do this in two steps by pulling it just to where the crossover is going to start and then continuing to do my berry because then it's much easier than trying to find a fid long enough to go the length of the crossover and then the entire initial berry and then if you're trying to bury past the crossover, then it's really hard to get uh, your splice closed up all the way. So I do it in two steps, which is really nice and easy, especially if you have a shorter, more regular size fid. And then I forgot to take pictures. So I have the uh, Samson manual, which these are fantastic. But this would be the step after where you finish and pull the, uh, the berry past the crossover. And then of course you're gonna taper both ends of it so that they lay nice and flat inside of the rope and then you just milk it all out and you're left with this beautiful finished product and then all you have to do is whip it. So again we have our three cover dependent ropes. Uh, these are uh, two of these which are not so commonly featured in the industry anymore but 16 strand which is definitely around and still kicking. Very uh, versatile rope and uh, easy to splice. Uh, pretty much used exclusively for uh, double rope climbing, but there are some people using this type of rope for uh, single rope climbing, but it does not work as well with uh, mechanical ascenders and such since it has that coarser cover to it. Uh, it still works okay, but uh, definitely not that premium feeling you're gonna get with like a 32 or 48 strand rope. So these are great ropes for beginners. They will last you a long time, well worth your money in terms of wear. But uh, yeah, they can get a little bit on the heavier side, but overall a great rope for a beginner. In uh, the next episode of this, we'll be talking about uh, hybrid uh, dependent ropes or uh, double standard double braid ropes, which uh, are a little bit more mainstream. You see a lot of double braid ropes. Everybody I work with uses double braid ropes uh, to climb uh, as that's what's supplied by our employer. But double braid are a little bit more versatile, a little bit more common than this, but they are a little bit smoother. So this, uh, the cover on these ropes is uh, great for beginners. But uh, stay tuned and hopefully I'll have that uh, double braid video up soon as well. And uh, check out any of my other videos if you're interested in uh, different kinds of splicing. I have a couple uh, videos out there if you're more curious about experimental uh, splices and ropes that are not uh, do not have common manufacturer instructions for splicing them out there but yeah I hope you uh, enjoyed this video and I look forward to making the next one thank you